Well, let's yeah. get to the chart master. We're talking about levels, so why not? Carter Braxton Worth is here to tell us where the charts tell him the S&P 500 is heading next. Carter, I know you've been listening to our conversation intently. What do you think? Yeah, you're citing key levels, of course, 3,400 being the pre-pandemic high. But before we look at the charts, I think the question is, are we oversold? And in any oscillator one might use, the answer would be yes. But then consider this. If anything, the stock currency commodity index hasn't gone lower in three and a half months, could it be oversold? By definition, no. We're the same level we were on June 16th. So if we've not gone lower in three and a half months, by definition, we really aren't oversold. My hunch is we break and it's pretty sharp. Let's look at some charts. The first is just the here and now S&P. I've circled the lows. Everyone's staring at it. Does it put in a double bottom and bounce or does it crack? Um, I'm in the crack camp. Uh, we're right at those lows. And here's the tell. It's not the S&P, it's the constituents. 58% of the constituents themselves are already below their June 16th low. And in fact, consider this, if you look at the median performance of all stocks since June, the median stock is already down 2.7% from its June low. The index is masking what's going on underneath the surface. Look at the next chart, it's longer term. Uh, several of you referred to the 3,400 level. That's the pre-pandemic level. And even Tim said maybe that was inflated. So the MSAI All Country World Index has already gone down to its pre-COVID high. I think the S&P follows suit. So you're looking at 7% from here. And at that point, we'd be down about 30 from the peak. Uh, look at the same chart another way, head and shoulders. Look at it another way, a big inverted um, cup and handle. And so it doesn't matter how you draw the lines. And the question is, could we go a lot lower? The final chart, you'll see it here next, looks at the 09 low to where we are now. We have been ascending in this perfect channel for the better part of 15 years. And we're just now to the midpoint. We're breaking into the lower band. How far we sink into the lower band is the question. Were we to get all the way to the bottom of that lower band, that is also a number that you just heard Tim referenced 3,000. That's about where that comes into play. 3,000 is a lower band. So with the damage, if, if that were the scenario that we're playing out, Carter, then, then would, the, would most of the damage be done in the mega cap portion of the, of the market? Well, typically what happens in, in a real wipeout, there are two areas that get hit the worst. And think about why. The things that have done the worst, that have been going down all along, people literally abandon them. Like, what am I doing in this thing? This is terrible. And then the exact opposite, things that have held up very, very well. People say, I should get out of this. I got to save my money. And so it's a barbell. The holdouts succumb and drop aggressively. And those that were always lagging really sink deep value that gets even cheaper. Hey, Carter, it's Tim. How about the ultra leadership? I often refer to the semis. And if you look at that relative chart to the S&P, again, we're at some really critical levels for where we've been for the last five years. Getting that market leadership now, uh, has it broken through? Yes, so the, the semis, of course, the SOX index is below its June low, so the transports, so the industrials. So the question is, semis have led almost every turn, even in 09, even in 07 on the way down. Uh, do semis start to stabilize? That'll be a key thing to look for. I don't see that yet. Look at something like Intel. It's just in free fall. So um, what are the relative safety areas, Carter? Are there well, any? That's, if uh, there are any. So the, the playbook, you know, day one in business school or page one of your first manual to your first job from your first boss, you hide in utilities and staples and healthcare and et cetera. Expensive. And so forth. But there a lot are of a few things like Apple that might be holding up better than others. Oh, so you're going to stick with Apple then? All right. I think so. Carter, thank you. Carter you Worth. Bet. Pick your safety play. Pick your safety play. Oh, is that what we're doing? Picking a safety play? New game. Play? New game. Do we have a graphic for this? It's not a game. We I mean, don't need a graphic. I'm just we have asking a, song? a question. We have... Over what time period? <laughs> in in the in the ride to a 3200, let's say. Yeah. What's going to hold what's, up? What, yeah, out, exactly. right, what's going to outperform a market that's cratering? I think. Listen, and we'll talk about this later, I'm sure. But healthcare to me is still a place that you can be reasonable valuations across the space. That I don't think it's going to be impervious to a market sell-off, but I think we'll outperform in a broader market sell-off. Here's the thing. I mean, if we're waiting for rates to sort of settle down. Mm -hmm. What is going to be that catalyst for rates to settle down? We've got just craziness happening around the world. I mean, if you took a look at the UK gilt, 30 year gilt, we hit levels that we have not seen since 1998. Uh, what is going on in fixed income 
broadly is just un unprecedented. Yeah, and, and again, you know, we keep hearing this expression by people who kind of get some of this macro stuff better than we do, um, that something's about to break. And if you look at what's gone on in, 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 in basically the British town, we've been talking about what's gone on with the euro, the, the 20 year, took 20 years, uh, the BOJ intervention there with the yen. I mean, there's things going on here where stock markets are just a, the, the, kind of a pawn here. And we're sitting here trying to find out yeah. individual names. And, you know, really it comes down to, you know, Mike Wilson, who comes on the show a lot from Morgan Stanley, he just took down his S&P estimates. And per fact set, they're coming down, you know, year over year. I think, you know, 9% growth was expected. Now consensus is about 7.5%. You tell me what the right multiple is in a recessionary environment that we have not even hit the recession yet. And we're going to be in a profits recession. You, I don't know, you want to put 14, you want to put 15 times. He's got $2 and 12, $2 and you know, 212 in earnings for next year. You put 14 on that and you get below 3,200. It's not far from guy's level here. So again, nothing's going to go in a straight line. And the C word is a dangerous word, especially this time of year. I just don't think we go down there like that. Well, the crash. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I didn't know where it was going, but I got no, it. I, 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 you made me say it. I didn't want to say it. I, you know, I don't want the headline to be that. But my point is, is like, it is one step forward, two steps back in bear markets like this. And that's clearly what we're in. Well, the C word could also be double C or C squared or constant currency. And all we hear about is the dollar. But what we haven't heard about even in mega cap tech is in constant currency terms where they're going to cut. Uh, in other words, we, we know the dollar has been uh, a beast and is certainly a major headwind. And I think that at some point it becomes a tailwind. Uh, you know, you just the dollar is so overbought doesn't mean it can't go further, especially based upon what's going on with, with uh, the differentials in policy. But but I haven't heard talk of budget cuts as it relates to enterprise or CapEx right. or software um, that hasn't flow through from any of the mega cap tech companies. And again, forget the dollar. How about constant currency? How about, you know, some of these companies that really have been the lifeblood of this move? Again, Apple's outperformed the, the S&P by 175 percent over the last five years. It, it, it's, it's clearly been a major boost to the entire marketplace. And I just don't think those comps are things we can hold up. If a company like a Microsoft is starting to take a look, a hard look at its workforce and tell employees not to travel as much, be careful with your expenses, when are we going going to hear, we're not buying as much technology, right? Uh, at some point, that follows. Logically, that follows. Not saying it has to, but logically, it would. Right. That, that makes yeah. perfect sense to me. But, uh, you know, we come back to this a couple of times about some of these big cap tech companies have never been expense sort of, you know, focused on the expenses. And so I feel like that is one area where they, they can't find Google growth. sounds like they are. Well, Google I mean, does I mean, now. That's all they talk Microsoft about. Microsoft does right. now. Facebook, yeah. in some way, they're spending a lot of money, but they're also cutting back in other areas. That's a, a driver, not as good as revenue growth, but a driver. But it's hard to think, oh, enterprise spend will be completely Untouched and remain the same. Well, the one piece of the puzzle that the Fed hasn't solved for yet is unemployment, and we know that they want that higher, right? right? right. So if you're a software company that you sell seats, licenses to these right. seats, and you have fewer we, heads, that's yes. right. So that's coming. That's coming, and these are the companies that are actually been in the forefront of reducing costs, headcount, that sort of thing over the last few months. And I just think you're going to see their customers start to do that very soon, and so that's kind of the last piece of the puzzle. When Microsoft reported, we said good news, bad news. If you recall, the stock. Close at 255, the report, beeline to 242. They said, we're not seeing a slowdown in demand. The stock went to 295, broader market rally. Everybody felt great about the quarter, which we said at the time was not particularly great. Now it's at 236, and it's actually trading as if exactly what the four of you were just talking about right now. We're going to see a slowdown in enterprise. And that is a good thing because that's the last piece of this puzzle, but it's going to be painful but getting there. what you're implying is that the level right now is already incorporating a pullback in demand. Yes. And so, therefore, if we do hear it, Maybe. it's still buying opportunity. Well, I, that it's priced in. Not, not, not yet. Not I don't, think it's, not I don't yet. think it's priced in yet, but I think it's pricing it in. Okay. I don't think so. And, and again, it gets back to multiples on the S&P, which right. are a function of, also of where interest rates are. Let's let's be clear. Our discount rates are at much higher levels. You got to almost 4% on that 10-year. You can just do the math in terms of evaluation of a company, but but it is what's the, you know, what's the E going to be there? And, and as Guy pointed out, we haven't even, are you telling me um, we're still in positive EPS growth, 22 to 23 over 22? I, I just, I'm not buying it. I, I'm just not buying it in a world where interest rates are that much higher. The rest of the world, I mean, look at the buying power of the rest of the world when the dollar's at 20-year highs. How, how, how easy is it going to be to buy software if you're a major enterprise in Europe? It's not. And, and I just, you know, that's the one part of this that it's one thing to say, what's the multiple you want to pay? But what is the earnings profile? We haven't even gotten there. Yeah. 
I think so we'll start to come up to earnings season soon. I think we'll, we're in this market where things will trade down on bad earnings. Even in this, so even if a competitor announced and you were down on that, and then you announced two days it'll later, it'll go down again. It'll go down again, as will the competitor as well. And until we see this, you know, bad news finally doesn't move a stock anymore, that will be more of a bottom than just a trading bottom.